Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Space Engineers. My name is AetherTech and today I am going to be doing a quick tour of two little builds, well one little build and one little build turned big build. And I, I took a ship and I upscaled it again. But anyway we're going to get started. Uh, this is just my little cabin where I run out of ideas and I work on this little cabin some more. But anyway let's just uh Let's go see this. Enough of the fanfare and preamble and other things. This is Bob. Bob standing for Beast of Burden. Bob is a transport. And Bob is very, very ugly and not shy about it at all. Bob just does his job. So, this is the Orbit to Ground Model 40 Revision H or so. I kind of stopped keeping track. Um, Beast of Burden aka Bob. It is mostly hydrogen thrusters with a few ion thrusters for space flight, for uh, docking and landing on space station ships, asteroids, and other locations without natural gravity. It is roughly... I forgot how long, I forgot how wide, and I forgot how tall it is, but uh, it's not small. It's uh, quite chunky, but let's head on inside and take a quick tour of it. Also, these are the uh, engine housings in the back, and I'm not exactly happy with them, but I have kind of given up on trying to improve them. And there's uh, two connectors on the top. And, of course, some landing gear in the bottom and some extra thruster power. So, heading up the ramp, we come into the cargo hold. Uh, I'm using some neon tubes painted either black or silver. Uh, the silver horizontal ones just represent rollers. The black ones are tie-down points for ratchet straps. We have uh, two control panels in the back, one on each side, that just control the rear hatch and the lights. So there's some white lights and some red lights. And then this block and this block are just decorative. Uh, let's see here. The hinges in the ceiling are supposed to be winches or some sort of pulley system. And then some girding along the side. Uh, to be very honest, fine detailing is not my strong point. So the, the walls are kind of just basic flat walls with some stuff slapped onto them. Uh, up front we have two ladders, two seats and then a front ramp entrance for the crew to enter and exit the vehicle. It's also just a secondary uh, point of entry and entry for cargo loading or troop deployment stuff. And it's just got a simple double door airlock. And then it folds up. And let's look at this from the outside so you can see how nicely it folds up. Almost perfect. <laughs> Not quite, but close enough for my for my purposes. And the camera on there also helps with landing uh, square off against things. Or aligned square with things. Uh, and then there's just two ladders, one on each side. They go to the same place. Uh, buttons for some more lights. A uh, gunner station and some greebling, and then this is the cockpit with, of course, a light switch. And there's just enough room for a player to stand right inside the door and still close the door. But let's take it for a quick test drive. I'm not going to bother with the ion thrusters because they don't do anything. We're going to close both ramps. And we're going to take off in 3, 2, 1. I hope that's not too loud, so we're going to adjust that quickly. 3, 2, and 1. Oh, right. should probably unlock those. 3, 2, and 1. So upward thrust is very good. 22 meters per second is pretty good for a transport. That will, of course, go down if you load it up. Let's retract the landing gear. Let's zoom in a little bit and forward thrust, which is 18. There are 
Only a few internal thrusters. I try to get rid of as many of them as possible, but there still, still are a couple. But, uh, not too bad. Turning, pretty good, but I mean, you can just always add more gyroscopes. Roll performance is good, and it can, of course, stay, uh, stay, what's the word I'm looking for? Stay in flight on any of its axes. Although it's acceleration, let me check something. It's acceleration or deceleration downwards is uh, not the greatest from this angle. But it's a fairly nimble and maneuverable craft, just somewhat bulky, which is appropriate for a cargo transport. It's just a basic utility vehicle. So let's bring it back into dock and fight the uh, acceleration a little bit. We're going to switch to the camera view right here to line us up. And I think I put the landing gear down, but we'll find out in a second. Right about there and cut the engines, ready to lock. Oops, wrong button, ready to lock. We are locked up, drop the doors, and dismount. So yeah, that's uh, that's the small version. Well, I have not painted the outside or the inside, and I probably never will. Also, I should mention it does have a little skylight feature for visibility. And then, uh, moving on, oops, hello. Moving on is the big version, which is the STG. M100B, uh, high bob. So STG is space to ground. This is a uh, this is a much longer range, much longer duration sort of utility cargo hauler for interstellar operations. And then high bob stands for a heavy interstellar cargo bob. I didn't add the C. I could add the C, but I haven't. So it's just high bob. So heavy interstellar beast of burden. Uh, outside changes are pretty minimal compared to the smaller version, but there's some solar panels, a large dorsal uh, loading bay slash hangar on top, and some custom turrets. Otherwise, it's pretty much basically the same except for not having the front ramp. Oh, and more landing gear, because just four of them did not look uh, did not look right. So we're gonna enter through the back here and I did test this with a, uh, a tank made by another space engineer and it did come up the ramp just fine with a head start I will say but this is the main cargo hold which has roughly 19,400 or so uh, cubic meters of capacity and I measured that basically to about half a meter below the winches up there and up to the Let's grab a block from about halfway through this block up to right about the end of this here. So that's a little over 19,000 cubic meters. But it's kind of the same basic layout. We have some hinge heads being winches, we have some girder blocks, and then we've got some entrances into the corridors of the ship. And if you're wondering what these things are sticking out, I just have the um, the landing gear pistons under here. Although it did give me a nice little towing ratchety uh, winch thing to go this way. So we're just going to come along to the back here. We're going to show the door coming up. Just a nice big heavy door. Bunch of hinges on it so it doesn't look too wimpy. And then, of course, we have some actual airtight blast doors. So slow. There we go. All right, let's open those back up. So the ship is basically mirrored except for one exception in the crew quarters area. So I'm just going to kind of go along one side, and then the other side is going to be the exact same. So if we come through here, which is supposed to be closed, but it was open, we have deck one corridor access. 
And then we come into this little area first. The ship goes obviously forward that way, but right here we have a ladder which goes up and also goes down into the crawl space. So we'll go there a second, or we'll go there later. So obviously if we go that way, we go to the four, the head, there's a head, uh, and then stairs to deck two are also that way. And then the carrot pointing down and the arrow go pointing at the door mean go through the door and go down, basically. So we'll just continue forward. Uh, I added some periodic little viewing stations so that crew members that are just walking through the hallway can take a peek out into the cargo hold and make sure there's not a problem out there. It also kind of breaks up the monotony of just a solid wall of corridor. Um, there's a block missing. What's missing here? Passageway should be one of you. All right. <laughs> I had to fix that, it's going to bother me. So right here we have stairs up to deck two. And then we can go forward some more. This is just a airlock into the inner and outer hull space, aka the machinery space. This is not as dense and compact as it could be. I decided for lore reasons to make this appear as if it was kind of just they take a hull, they put the materials in, the components in, they try not to shoehorn too much in for simplicity and ease of manufacture. So there is a lot of open space in the hull. And I believe the whole ship is 170 meters long. So we're just going to go forward some more. Uh, here's a head. And then here is another set of stairs going up, which I am apparently missing a block below, so I'll come back and fix that later. And then of course signage everywhere. And then as we come around to the front of the ship, we just have some lockers up here for storage and spacesuits for emergencies. Spoilers. And then there's another airlock up here to access into the cargo hold. So yeah, and uh, these are the wrong, wrong passageways. Much better. <laughs> so here's just another ladder going up, but we're going to actually close that in, close that down, and head back down the other side of the ship to find a passageway ladder going stair going up here we go and now we're on deck two so deck two we have the ladder that was down there comes up here close that down and then it's more of the same in terms of corridor design at the aft here we have some more lockers and spacesuits and then we have aft storage, airlock, and the machinery access. So there's some actual cargo containers, I believe 22 in total on the ship. And then there's an airlock back here with some more lockers and suits. And that just exits out the back of the ship at the tail. And of course, a button to control the lighting. So if we continue forward then, going back into the deck two enclosed corridor, and we'll head into the actual, I guess the hangar slash secondary cargo storage. So we've got a pair of big doors. This is not airtight. Um, unfortunately, standard vanilla airtight hangar doors are just a little bit too short. I don't think Keen is going to change that, but we can close the doors and watch what that looks like. Slow, heavy, ponderous. And a little bit of friction, but uh, yeah, that's what it looks like when they're closed. And we'll open that back up. Hello. We will open that back up. 
and jump on down. Yeah, sometimes it just gets stuck. I'll have to up the at to at something, whatever the force is called. Lateral force against something. Or just force of the hinges. I don't know. <laughs> I just build things. I don't really think about the mechanics that much. So heading back into the deck two corridors. Right inside the hangar we have a head. But if we come around to either side of that, we have a storage room. And then, of course, there was the ladders and stairways over here and over there. So we're going to head down here and take a U-turn and look at the signage. But hangar control booth, deck to corridor and hangar access, and then crew facilities. But first things first, we're going to look at the hangar booth. Very basic, two control seats, a desk, and a couch. And I need to hook up that button. Oh well. And then going back downstairs, we'll come to the crew facilities in a little bit. If we head forward again, I'm just going to leave these open now. We have stairs and ladder access from deck one. So this particular stairway meanders a little bit, but goes down to deck one. And then if we come through this set of doors at the very front, we get to the bridge. And the lights. So my only serious complaint is that when I upscaled the other design, the little version, uh, I probably should have redesigned the bridge to use one high windows, but I've left it as two high windows because I'm lazy and I really didn't want to redesign it. Plus I figure as a low technology transport that having a lot of visual ability from the cockpit is fairly important when you're not relying so much on sensors because they're expensive or something like that. But yep, no, just a basic cockpit. And finally we're going to head back over to the crew facilities. And there's another machinery space access here as well as a couple other spots. So this is the crew facilities area. It's buried deep in the middle of the ship, so that keeps the crew safe from impacts, pirate attacks, etc. Uh, up front is one of the two gravity generators. We have the mess right here on this side. So two four-person tables and a two-person table, a couple couches, some plants, and some basic uh, kitchen facilities. On the other side of the gravity generator, we have the med bay, which is a pretty basic facility. Uh, three beds, a couple cryo tubes, a med head, medical bay head, and then just some greebly lab equipment, and a desk. And then coming back in through here, there is a set of quarters here and here. Uh, there's four officers, the captain, the XO, the loadmaster, and also a chief engineer. And I'm missing some blocks apparently. I'll have to come back and add the one behind that later. But this is just a uh, officer's cabin. Bed, storage, lockers, desk, private bathroom. This side, the design's a little bit different, but it's basically the same in terms of uh, footage. Then there's some lockers, more plants, and then we come back into the regular crew cabins. There are eight of these. They have four people in them each. So four bunks, four sets of lockers, and then an additional locker in the back. And then between each of the cabins is either a toilet facility or a shower facility so there's four toilets four t four showers and then just more crew quarters more toilets more crew quarters more showers 
And then through this door is aft storage. As well as some machinery space access. So through the two doors on this side, we just have some small little cargo rooms. These would be for the cruise consumables and such things like that, or additional expanded living facilities for additional passengers. And then we have two sets of doors here that go out into the machinery spaces again, which I will fly through at the end of this. And then another set of slightly smaller cargo bays. And then this door leads us to the aft section of the ship again with the second gravity generator, a bunch of batteries on the floor, the cargo containers, and then the aft airlock, which was right up there. So, um, yeah, that's kind of about it. And then we'll just do a quick fly around of the machinery spaces, but I decided to throw in a refinery and assembler. Uh, I honestly don't know why but I figured that the ship like this could probably use a little self-sustainment. But otherwise, it's a lot of just sort of basic piping, tubing, threading. Oh, that's why that was there. <laughs> Let's put that back. Uh, piping, tubing, engines, some uh, hydrogen generators, hydrogen tanks, etc. I don't build these for survival. These are purely built for story reasons for my own little universe. And if I remember correctly, I was missing a block somewhere, but I'll have to go find it later. So yeah, that's it. That was the Bob and... Oh, I have to fly this around first, don't I? Yep, let's not forget that. But first, let's uh find a way back into the ship. And let's go see what the performance is of this. This big boy. Alrighty, first things first, let's close the doors. So it's 8 and 9. And we'll close that as well for reasons. Then I don't think I'm locked down, so let's engage the engines. And let's push up. So 9.5 roughly for upwards acceleration. Not spectacular, but not terrible. And that's with the additional extra thrusters on the bottom. And then forward acceleration, a little bit better, 10, 11 ish. Not bad, not bad. And then side to side, as soon as we slow down, and we're slowing down at a nice rate. And then side to side is almost seven. Not great, but not terrible. It at least moves. Maneuverability wise it's a little bit more sluggish, but it's still it's still nimble enough to dock it where you want to put it. And then it is of course armed with uh, six uh, custom turrets that are four auto cannons each. Not a very heavy armament, but it is mostly a transport not a war vehicle though you could use it to transport troops tanks etc i believe about 20 to 30 tanks can fit in it which reminds me the uh, top cargo hold is 17,000 uh, cubic uh, meters of storage capacity oh boy i'm tilted badly there let's uh level off and come on down so 19,000 for the deck one storage 17,000 for the Hello. 17,000 for the deck 2 storage, and then roughly another 10,000 uh, total metric cubic meters of storage between the other storage rooms and the 22 uh, cargo containers. So, yeah, that is the Bob, the High Bob, and that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.